Hello and welcome to this section of record type. So in this section we will be learning about the data sources of record type, about the types of record type and how we can use the record type, related action, record action and many other things. So let's get started and uh, I need to click on new and then I need to create a record type. So what is a record type basically first we need to understand and then we can move forward. So whenever we will be having some large amount of data and source can be anything right source can be data base which is already connected it can be integrated with some other external database or uh, the data source can be process model. So whenever I will be having some a large amount of data and I wanted to show that data uh, to the client then I will be using the record type to show that data in a read only manner right by using read only grids and we can also perform some actions on that data. For example, I have a list of students and I wanted to perform some action. Either it can be add new students or uh, update the records or delete some records. So I can perform that actions on that bunch of data by using the record actions and related action. So let's create this record type and um, I will name this as expense because we will be already having some data related to expense in the DB. So we'll be creating one record type for expense data and I just need to put the name it will automatically come and the description as expense list. Let's create this. So this is the security which is automatically coming. I just need to click on create and then this is my record type which is created but this is currently empty. Now you can see the very first thing which is data model right. So what is the data model? The data model is the source from where the data is coming. So this is what we need to tell this record type that um, please configure my data source and I need to click on this tell us about your data. So now I will select the database or maybe process or other external services. So what are the types of record type? So the record types are uh, entity back record, process back record or expression back record. So you can see whenever I will be selecting the source as a database then it is entity back record. So you can you already know that entity is data store entity in Appian and whenever I will be selecting source as a process then that is a process back record and if I will be selecting Salesforce or some other external service then it is a expression back records right. So now in my scenario I have a database table which I need to select and I will select the data source as database. So for example, I don't have a database table also, right? So now record type provides the functionality to start with this and create a record data base table also. So now I already have a data, so I will select this option and I will click on next. So this is the sync feature available by record type. It will automatically sync and it will be fast. So or I will choose this one. In views, this will not work. It will only work inside the tables. So let's click on next. It's loading and I need to select my database table. So I have created one connected system. That's why this data source is coming, but I need to select my database table, which is ET and this one expense data. So this is how we can select and this is something preview which is coming. I just need to click on next and next some by default options and I will select all the columns here. You can see if I don't want to use any of the columns from this list, from the database table I can remove it and I can also modify this later. So this is map mapping of the database table with the record fields. So nowadays uh, because previously we need to use CDTs for uh, writing the data into the DB or re reading the data into the DB but now we have the functionality so we can achieve whatever we are doing with CDTs now we can do it with the record type also. And for uh, mapping the fields and for pointing to the fields we can use record type instead of using CDTs because CDTs are very lengthy right we need to create a CDT first and then we need to uh, create a data store entity and then we need to use a constant for that right for data store entity. So we can directly use the record type also whenever we will be selecting the data type. So about this we will discuss about this later on but right now let's click on finish because my source is selected. And uh, if I wanted to select any of the source filter, then I can click on this add filter and it will put a source filter here. I can click on add filter and I can specify, for example, 
I only want that uh, the data will come for which the is active is true. And I can enable this, click OK. Now this source filter is added, right? We can edit this again if we want, and this is filtered. So this is how we can add a source filter and it will not fetch the data which is already filtered out. So I have saved and it will start sync. So after selecting the data source and when I click on save, it will start syncing and with the help of this view record list link, I can go inside the record. You can see there is nothing which is coming. Why? Because is active is null for both of them. So now I will update it manually. So whenever we are updating something manually, then we need to sync it again. So now I will start this sync again and it is syncing. It's completed. Let's re refresh this record page. So now you can see we have this data, right? Which is coming from the DB. So this is how we need to select the source and we will see in the next lecture how we can modify this list, right? This record type list. That's all for this lecture.